All right, so here we're going to talk about how we measure the loop gain of a converter. And here I'm just showing the small signal diagram, just showing the loop, so the plant and then the loop around, including the feedback, everything that comes back to create our uh, duty ratio signal all the way to the output. So this is what we need to measure. So let's look at how to do that. We're going to go ahead and open Simplis, and this assumes that you already have a converter with feedback designed. Of course, this process can help you tune that, but you've chosen something to at least to start with. So here we have a, our boost converter. This is the same as it was previously, actually part of a PFC design, so we just keep the power stage all the same. But now we have some feedback. So we have our voltage coming out here and we're going to uh, feedback divider and then we actually have a dual loop system here um, we have a voltage loop for compensation and then that is fed into as a reference for the current loop and the current is reading the um the inductor current through here so this is technically a, a two loop system but we can still measure the um, loop gain of it without a problem. And then this analysis is mostly used for stability. And so that's what we will look at. All right, so we have the system. Um, everything's already been chosen. We're just gonna go with it, assuming it's been made. So let's start with making sure that it runs properly. I always like to start there. So we can start with just a transient, make sure that it just runs and switches. Okay. So it does run, so that looks good. Now we want to see, so we can see the inductor is switching here, so that's uh, working effectively. And now let's make sure that it can go to pop, because remember, if pop is not working, then it is not going to be able to do any AC analysis. So let's go back to the simulator. Now we're going to do a pop. And we're, we can look at uh, periodic operating point. Here um, we can, Settings have already been set, so we're just going to go ahead and run it. All right, and we see that this has uh, reaches a uh, peri its periodic operating point, its average steady state, and um, we can see that this is our inductor value, and that our output voltage is right around 400 volts. Okay, great. So that's definitely achieving that. Now we're going to want to do our AC analysis but let's need our probes to set it up. I'm gonna close this real quick. Um, one thing I'll just note is that we do have the pop trigger. It's moved to the sawtooth waveform actually here. So this is a sawtooth comparator. Um, it's a very stable system uh, signal, so we can also use our pop trigger there. All right, so now let's add in the um, AC perturbation and the measurement. One of the kind of weird things is now it's a loop, right? So how do we input a signal into a loop? Before we generated a signal at one like very clear signal and then we measured it at another distinct signal and they were not connected together in any, like through the system only. So, but this time we have a very clear loop. So our loop is just to review our output here and then going through our feedback our secondary feedback is actually also I guess, feedback here. Um, and then ultimately going through to our gate signal, our effective duty ratio would be um, coming in here. And so we need to now break this loop so we can actually place it. Um, here we can place it actually at the V out and we'll see what that looks like. So we're going to go to place voltage source. We're gonna do AC analysis here. I wanna rotate it so that it's actually going to, uh, the plus is on the right side, so I can press F5, F5 for that. All right, so now our AC is going here. But then you say, well, what, what are we measuring? Like, how do we get the signals for that? So we need an input and output, right? So actually, let's place that probe real quick. So we can go to the Bodhi probe with measurements. I'm going to put it down here and we're putting into our system 
we can, it's asking, do we want to measure these things? We are looking at the loop gain. So yes, we want to look at um, crossover frequency, gain margin, and phase margin, because those will give us some indication about um, stability. So then we need to get some signals here around here. So we have V out, but actually we also need on this side. I have actually conveniently labeled this already. I wonder if I can move this. Oh, no, it's going to give me some, uh, make it difficult to move, but I will just move it by copy, cut and paste. Okay. So just to show that we're really clearly like before and after the signal, I'm going to put these two terminals here. And now we need to connect them to um, here. So you may say, okay, well this, it's from this left to right. So this would be the input and the output. Um, actually, that is not correct. The input is gonna be this side. So after this positive. So you can think of it like this is a, for just for conceptual thinking, this is some steady signal, the output voltage but then we're adding some perturbation on top of that. So this would be our input, because this is right after the perturbation. We'll put it here. And then our output would be going through the entire loop, coming out through the system, and then the out would, the O here would be our actual output. So we're gonna take that and put it over here. All right, so now we should be able to run this. this is actually all we need so let's go to choose analysis and now we're going to do ac again it automatically does that pop um, and we established that it already goes to pop so that should be fine and we're going to look at some range here we'll start with 25 uh, points per decade sure so let's go ahead and run this All right, so here we get um, our pop output, and after a small computation time, a little bit longer than the other one, then we get our um, system. Here, this phase is actually on the top, and then the gain is on the bottom. I forgot to switch that, so why don't we just do that? So do gain and phase, um, put the gain on the top, and we're going to move this up. Actually, it already gives us our measurements here. It automatically did that when it asked us that question. It automatically added these. So let's just re close this and rerun this. All right, so we can check our pop. And then really what we want is the um, frequency domain here. So we can see we have our gain on the top and we can see visually where our crossover frequency is. We can also go over here and look at the exact value. So about 40 um, hertz is where it's crossing over and we can look at the gain margin and the phase margin. So here um, as you're developing your controller you can say okay is this acceptable for my design like what my, my target values and then if it's not, you can alter either your, usually at this point, you'd be altering your compensation in order to uh, achieve the, for example, the phase margin and gauge margin that you want and the crossover frequency. And so then you could go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not gonna cover that whole process here, but I will mention that, of course, there's um, many companies have their own like, approaches to it. The reference that I think is excellent is by Professor uh, Trey, which I, I reference his um, book quite a bit in um, the presentation. It's a pulse with modulated DC to DC power conversion by Pyeongcho Trey. So I do recommend that one. That's one I follow. It has a very nice step-by-step -step, um, a way to approach that. So just for your background information. All right. So once we have that, then actually it's, it's pretty good. Um, if we want to get higher you know resolution here again we can do that so we can go into our analysis and say let's do this now 100 and run again it's gonna take a little bit longer because we did more points in between 
So this would be probably something you wanted to do when you were, you know, like really checking on your exact design. But now we can see there's a little bit more clarity here. Um, here is at 100 kilohertz. Again, that's a switching frequency. Most of the time, um, we're only going up really to the, like, not too many negative dBs. Like once we get over here, it's quite a negative dB. So this signal is very, very small. So this is almost um, going to be just very, very, very small. So most of the time we're just looking at this um, lower frequency region here around the crossover frequency. I will make one note here. Let's go back to this one. I want to keep this graph up because I want to show um, how it can be different. So here we broke the loop is what we're calling by adding this uh, AC signal in. We did it at the output. We can try to do it at different points. Um, for example, we could try to do it here. So let's try to move that. So it's going to move that guy over here. Move it here. We are going to have to rewire our um, re rewire this back. Actually move some of our signals here. And move this out. Keep V out as it is. But we're going to add one on this side. Uh, and we're going to call this uh, v ref one just to match the other one, the label here. So we have uh, v command we're calling it, and then v ref one. And so we can also use those signals into our um, probe here. So we would have to update some things here. So remember the input here is the v ref. So we can just double click this v ref one and. Um, v command CMD. All right, so essentially we've moved, just moved the signal in our loop. Um, this can make a difference in some, we'll, 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 I'll show you. <laughs> so let's rerun this right now. We're going to do just showing the same um, analysis here. We'll keep it with 100. It's going to take a little longer and that's fine. So we're going to run this. All right, so the blue one now is the um, updated one where we moved the signal. All we did the same loop, but we moved the signal to a different position. And pretty much all the low frequencies are exactly the same. But um, as we get to some higher frequencies, also notice that the gain here is just super low. So these signals are quite small, but we are getting a slightly different um, trend here. So just take note of that. Um, the uh, position of this matter and depending on what we're really looking at is generally going to be all the models are only valid you know up to half of the switching frequency so um, luckily we can look at just it here but just note that they can be different depending on where that position is so in this part i just wanted to show how we can move an ac signal um, into break the loop and this is because it's a dual system it's actually the outer loop we can break this loop and then we can look at the um, phase margin and gain margin and crossover frequency the frequency characteristics of the frequency response and then from here we can actually determine stability we can look at the uh, values that come out there and then if it's not meeting our requirements we could then alter our uh, parameters of our control or the type of control that we're using for example but that's how we can see that analysis and then modify the controller or prove that it is meeting our specifications.